Okay, I will now move on to the fourth question, which is, does anthroposophy share with Buddhism the denial of the subject-object structure? Okay, the subject-object structure in, in anthroposophy, uh, I'll constrain myself to speaking about anthroposophy in this regard because I really don't know much about the Buddhist view. Um, but Steiner is very clear about this uh, in a number of his philosophical works that the subject-object dualism that we experience in life, which is, a, which is a real experience, so that's the world that we're given. I'm here, you're there. There's an inner world, there's an outer world. Um, is an artifact of consciousness. It's not, it's not a statement or a reality about the world. It's a reality about how the world shows up in our mentality, how the world shows up in consciousness. Okay, so that's number one. It's a fact, but it's a fact about consciousness, not a fact about the world. You're not going to overcome subject-object dualism by virtue of some kind of philosophical argument. So the so-called hard problem, as it's described nowadays by, Dave, by Chalmers and others, you know, this, this eventually the problem of dualism, uh, is not going to be gotten over by some kind of philosophical or scientific uh, achievement. If it is, in fact, a f an artifact of consciousness, and consciousness can be changed through meditation, for example, then one has the possibility of moving through stages of awareness and consciousness towards a non-dual awareness. It's again a potential that every human being has, but not actualized. Uh, it's, in the anthroposophical tradition, the culminating experience of the meditant w is uh, a non-dual awareness. Rudolf Steiner calls it by the name intuition. So one begins with a sense consciousness, straightforwardly dualistic, no apparent way to get around it, mind-body problem, all of that, right? They're kind of correlates of that, of that dualism. And, uh, and then we begin the meditative path and we move to a form of consciousness where sense experience is in some ways transformed, maybe I'll say, to begin with, rather than set aside, it's first transformed. Steiner speaks about this as imagination. There are certain meditative practices which, which uh, lead to that. Uh, once that's been stabilized and achieved, there's a way in which one suppresses that form of awareness, that is to say, sets that form of awareness aside in order to cultivate yet a higher form of consciousness where one feels much more actively participatory. So the first stage is kind of more of a release. Second stage is a participation in the unfolding, transforming, uh, resounding uh, dimensions of existence, sometimes called a, a kind of harmonious sounding with the spheres, the harmony of the spheres. Uh, there are many metaphors for it, um, but it's basically a kind of f full participation in world existence. So it's a participatory form of cognition, experience. Uh, one is pretty well freed of the body, that is to say, of the constraints of cognition as it's bound to brain and body. And then that gives one the possibility of attaining to this non-dual form of consciousness, which he describes as intuition, and is achieved only through the, com the completely purified capacity for love. The love is, you could say, that which allows the non-dual awareness to arise. So if one has either too much self-love, you know, I'm too bound to my own ego, my own self, my own identity. I can't get, I can't achieve this. What, what is required is what we were talking about earlier, the, the experience of the no-self. So I reset that my, my own notions of self aside, I can become the other. And I know now not from the outside, but I know my being the other, right? I don't know from a distance or even through participation which still implies, here am I, and I'm participating in something else, but I only know now in that non-dual form of awareness by truly being, cohabiting, co-being with the other. So non-duality is achievable through a meditative discipline. 
and then one comes back, you could say, to the source existence of, of reality, which is itself non-dual, right? And in the process of, kind of you might say, world creation and human existence, it shows up in the way we, we experience the world.